Hi, I'm David Andrade, and you're watching Behind the Scenes with Theory Animation. Now, the studio's been quite busy since we've last talked. First, have you heard of the Rain Clovis Monster Edition? It's our new digital release of Rain Clovis, featuring our animation files like sets, props, the George rig, the George toy, and of course, all of our Rain Clovis shorts. You can grab it at our shop. And while you're there, check out our new Rain Clovis Dream Big shirts and mug. Speaking of animation, We've been exploring some new sequences in the next episode of Rain Clovis with concept artist Juan Stroop Jr. Now some of you have asked, how do we build our characters in Blender? So, for this month's Behind the Scenes, I'd like to introduce you to Juan Pablo Buza. He's our rigging artist from Argentina, or like a puppet builder. He's worked on some amazing shorts and films. Let's hear what he has to say. And and I and actually I started with 3D animation like when I was 13 or so. That time there was no internet, you know. There weren't any online manuals or, or things like that. I was like like self-taught in everything. In all those years since I was 13, I <laughs> I kind of tried to to create a human mesh, you know. Uh, I was kind of obsessed with the idea of creating a, a great human mesh, but I I could never do it then. <laughs> With the Blender information, I, I was able to discover what rigging was actually, because that was kind of um, wizard stuff, you know, in <laughs> in 3D Max, and rigging is like something difficult you know and, and obscure <laughs> an obscure art and i i always say that i'm i don't consider myself a rigger you know i'm just a who likes to see his characters move you know and for making those characters move you need to know some rigging so well the first thing i i did with blender was this character and well i started to to create this rig following the, the online manuals of Blender. And well, and then I discover, you know, the interface of Blender with the armature things, it's it's like different from other programs, from other software. Uh, and for me, I, I found it really intuitive, you know? So I kind of started to test things, uh, like adding a lot of extra bones for deformation. This character has like, 700 bones or so you know with deformation the thing the main thing is preserving volume you know volume preservation is like the most difficult part of it it's like the the artistic part i consider rigging like in two separate topics you know one is rigging and that is well with putting the bones in place with constraints and all the fancy mechanisms you know but the other part is skinning and skinning is kind of the artistic part of rigging so well with this character I, I just started to to think of how to preserve volume you know and for example you see here we have the arm so i created this mechanism you know that it is a, a stretchy bone with these two top bones and well when you move the arm it kind of preserves the volume you know if I, I take this out you can see the difference of what this bone is actually doing you see for the fingers too the same technique I kept on improving the rig you know and did this blend rig for release improving the rig actually means that I kind of updated it with the new Blender features, you know. While yeah, they were doing Sintel, I, I did the Blender 4 thing. By this time, I started working on Chronopius and Famas, the feature film. I was the lead technical director, actually, and, well, and I also animated and, and kind of finished the whole movie on my own because I also did the editing and the sound editing and design 
but with the animation, um, I got help from from a small team. We created a team of seven guys, Blender guys, uh, with Malefico, uh, Pablo Lizardo, and some other Blender users. Well, it was a 19 minutes feature film that was released here in Argentina. It was also screened in, in Europe and, and in the United States also. So it's kind of cool. And it's 100% free software with Blender, GIMP, and Ardor for the, for the audio. Well, the story is actually based on a book of short stories by a writer called Julio Cortázar, an Argentinian writer. And well, actually, the, the movie is based on 10 stories and the drawings of each short were created by important Argentinian artists. So, for example, in this story, we used pictures from an artist called Carlos Alonso. We got his paintings and we kind of cut them all out and created all this motion graphic thing, like motion graphic film and it was somewhere more motion graphic and some stories were more 3d you know well here's the the editing of, of the whole film you know well it was kind of, of a cool experience to do everything in blender you know around this time juan pablo started to work on a new film called kiribati it led to the development of blend rig 5 and the new rain clovis rigs Let's listen in. This would be a prototype of Blendrick 5, which I'm going to finish when I work in Gooseberry, the Gooseberry project. It's a rig that has like seven years of work on it. You know, it's, it's, it has been really improved. With, with Kiribati, I got feedback from real animators. Um, so I could change a lot of things with the controllers, you know, to make it easier to use. Um, and then one of the biggest challenges was, was to make the, the facial rig, which turned out really cool, you know. This is really cool because it has just a few controllers, main controllers, which kind of do everything automatically, you know. Uh, it is based on bones, not on shape keys. It has some corrected shape keys, but all the main deformation is is done with the bones, which is much better than than just shape keys. And well, the good thing about this is that, as you can see, you can apply it on on a human mesh or a humanoid mesh, but you can also put it in on a tune character. Fortunately, the the rig really works well with many different shapes, you know. Maybe with the Caminandas rig, I had to to add more like more controllers to the mouth. But with Ray and, and Clovis, I, I didn't have to do anything special actually. Do the way painting manually in the face because I like to have more control over what I'm I'm doing, you know, and the fi on, and over the final result. The automatic thing is with the body actually because it is based on mesh to form so we have a mesh to form cage and we can stretch the rig in order to to obtain like different proportions for different characters and you can kind of bake that and so you have like really quickly you can have a base rig for another another character with different proportions um, so that's the kind of cool aspect about the rig. But then you have some some things that you have to do manually, like painting the, the fingers and the toes. And well, on the face is kind of, of, of hard to do. You know, we, we paint every bone separately. Yes. But well, it's not that hard, you know. It kind of takes one or two days to to do the whole facial rig if you want to have a like a totally cool result you know like rayon clothes if not you can do just automatic painting <laughs> with some blender tools and maybe it goes it goes out well or maybe not my technique is to paint everything manually you know 
I feel more comfortable with that. This rig also has some some bones that do volume preservation, you know, like these ones that kind of move out when the arm rotates, you know, and help volume preservation. Every rigger must have his own his own tricks, you know. <laughs> These are mine. I must admit, I, I have to learn some Python, but not for for the rig actually, not 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 for for the rigs, but for the user interfaces and mainly for for the animators, you know, so that they have easier access to to all the the tools that you give them. There are kind of two different kind of, of riggers. Um, actually, I think they all have to end in the same good result, you know? They, you have to always aim for for the best you can do. But well, for me, for what I, I've learned mainly with Kiribati, if you don't animate with your rigs, you it's a good idea to have an animator testing your rig and, and giving you feedback. So you actually know if, if the rig is is easy to use or not because that's that's important you know the, the controls are for the animator you know as a rigger you you might get angry you know with some animator that tells you it's not perfect <laughs> but many times they are right you know and you have to pay attention to that <laughs> and you have to learn from those guys who are actually using the rig you had to to learn from criticism you know that's a good idea and, and not getting angry. <laughs> and then, and well, the other part, the skinning process is, for me, it's kind of the most important uh, in an artistical way, you know, because as a rigger, you know, many animators may, may get angry with this, but I think that actually the rigger, <laughs> the rigger is the one that gives life to the character. But, he is like asleep, you know. <laughs> the character is, is asleep without an animator. The animator gives him the personality, you know. But the life, I think that the, the life is given by the by the rigger. So it's kind of, of important to pay attention to the formation and all the that stuff, you know, because that's the life of the character, <laughs> actually. I'd be releasing a, a, a car and motorcycle rig let me see if this works. You know, we have a car rig in Kiribati, so I might release it. It's kind of a of, of really cool rig with automated wheel rotation and, and many things that are really nice. Blendrick has this controls that let you stretch the rig and, and bake it. I'll do the same with this. Then currently, I, I don't have those kind of controls to reproportion the car, so I have to do it manually. In, in Kiribati, I, I do it manually. But yes, I have to, to make those uh, user-friendly controls. I'll be able to, to publish the rig. It will be kind of uh, an auto rigging for, for vehicles, you know. Here we have the motorcycle rig. You know, it has a lot of tuny controls, you know, kind of cool. So, well, I'll, I'll be publishing that. And finally, I want to do a, a tutorial series, but aimed not rigging, but deformation. So I'm building this new character. It really took some, some time, you know, to, <laughs> to develop all this topology. The character has like 40,000 polygons, you know. So in that, in that series, I, I want to, to kind of rig this character and, and make a, like, the whole process of, of deformation uh, to the final the final picture, you know? I want to do a, a kind of epic illustration with this character. Not exactly with this, with this shape. I'm, I'm going to make a, like a barbarian with fighting a monster or something like that, you know? <laughs> something that, that, that looks cool for making the, the series. So, well, I, I'm working on that. But well, first I have to work in, in Gooseberry Project. <laughs> Thank you for taking the time to watch our behind the scenes video with Juan Pablo Buza. Now, don't forget to subscribe to our newsletter because the animators have something really special planned for you this Christmas. 
Until then, I'm David Andrade from Theory Animation. <laughs>